Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be revising some of the topics on the CSEC geography syllabus while examining a topographic map. Notice on the map that we see a relief feature to the southwestern section of the map. A closer examination of this feature shows that the roughly circular contour lines increase in value towards the center, while their size actually decrease. At the very center, we see a depression symbol. From this, we can tell that the feature we are examining is a volcanic cone and that depression symbol we're looking at represents the crater of the volcano. If we wanted to be more certain of the shape of this feature, we could actually construct a cross section. Now, if you are not so sure about how to construct a cross section, I will leave a link within the description box. You can click on that link to learn a little more. Now, volcanoes are formed by the cooling of molten rocks, which means that they are igneous rocks. They are made of igneous rocks, I should say. Igneous rocks can be classified into intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks form inside of the crust as a result of magma cooling, while extrusive igneous rocks are formed at the surface as a result of lava cooling. All right, now the difference between magma and lava is basically location. So magma is the name given to the molten material when it's beneath the surface and lava when it reaches to the surface. Intrusive rocks are associated with intrusive vol volcanic landforms and these intrusive volcanic landforms include volcanic plug, batholith, sill, dike, lacolith, and so on. Extrusive rocks are associated with extrusive volcanic landforms and these extrusive volcanic landforms include lava plateau, shield volcano, composite cone, volcanic dome, caldera and so on. These differ in their shapes and composition. Now, after volcanic cones are formed, they usually change over time. For example, their size could increase due to more materials being added by eruptions. Their tops could collapse due to very explosive eruptions and this could create calderas. The calderas could be infilled with water to create crater lakes. Another thing that could happen to these cones is that they could be influenced by the processes of denudation, which include weathering, erosion, and mass wasting. So for example, we could notice that there are a number of rivers flowing along the, the slope of the volcanic cone on the map. As these rivers flow along the slope, they can erode the slope and carry away materials and then deposit them again. When the rivers deposit rock sediments, it is possible for another type of rock to be formed. 
Of course, this usually takes place over a long period of time. Rocks formed from the cementation and compaction of sediments are called sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks can also be formed by biological activities, as in the case of coral reefs. Now let's look at the map again. If you look to the northeastern section of the map, you will notice some coral reefs. These coral reefs are limestone ridges formed when tiny marine creatures called polyps build up external skeletons to protect themselves. And of course, we know that limestone rocks are sedimentary rocks. So, igneous rocks, such as those that form the volcano that we looked at, and sedimentary rocks, such as those that form coral reef, together with metamorphic rocks, constitute the three categories in which rocks can be classified. These three rocks are constantly being destroyed and reformed. The continuous process by which these rocks are destroyed and formed again is known as the rock cycle. Two ways by which rocks are destroyed within the rock cycle are erosion and weathering which form sediments and by the melting of rocks which form molten rocks such as lava or magma. Two ways by, by which rocks are formed again include the cooling of magma as well as the cementation and compaction of sediments. Now, heat and pressure can change an existing rock into a completely new rock without the rock being destroyed completely. Now, these rocks and the landforms that they create are very important to us as humans. Notice along the slope of the volcanic cone that there, there is agricultural activity going on. This is because volcanic rocks, when they break down by weathering, can give rise to very fertile soils. And crops can grow well on these soils. At the same time, if the volcano is still active or even dormant, it could result in danger to those who settle near or even along these slopes. The coral reefs, which are made up of the limestone rocks, also play a very important role in both the environment as well as the economy. They form habitats for marine organisms and thus provide fishing grounds for fishermen. They break waves and therefore reduce coastal erosion. They act as tourist attractions and therefore they help to build the economy. Coral reefs are also important sources of scientific research. At the same time, coral reefs are very fragile and can easily be damaged. They require a specific set of conditions to survive. So in the absence of any of these conditions, they can be damaged or destroyed. Now, notice that the rivers flowing over the volcanic cone 
appear to be radiating from the top of the cone. They create a specific pattern called a radial drainage pattern because they radiate or I should say they appear to radiate from the top or from the summit like the spokes of a bicycle. Other drainage patterns include dendritic drainage pattern, parallel drainage pattern, sentry, petal drainage pattern, trellis drainage pattern, and so on. If we examine the river, which ends in grid square 21, 15, we will notice some fluvial features. For example, we notice the bending of the river close to Easting 21. This bend in the river channel is called a meander. A meander has two distinct sides. The side where the bend is smaller is called the inner bank. On the side, sorry, on this side, the river flows slowly and therefore deposits its material. On the wider bend, which is called the outer bank, the river flows faster and therefore there is more erosion that takes place on that side of the meander. Notice at 21.15 or within 21.15 that there is a part of the river which has been completely cut off from the rest. This is called an oxbow lake and is formed from the migration of the meander. At the mouth of the river, there is another fluvial feature called a delta. This is a depositional feature and it is formed as a result of the two bodies of water meeting. All right, so where the river and the sea meets, then the velocity of the river slows down. And as velocity slows down, then deposition takes place and the feature is formed. Of course, there is a little bit more detail to the formation of the delta and I would encourage you to do your reading. Besides the physical features of the area, we also see some features which indicate that there is human settlement in the area. For example, there's a police station. Now we can give the location of the police station in different ways. For example, we could say that it is located to the northwest of the hotel or the west of the factory. We could also locate it in terms of its distance from another point. Another way we could locate this feature is by giving the grid reference. And if we choose to do so, we will say that the police station is located at 19069. Notice that there are three categories of economic activities on the map as well. There is agriculture, which is a primary economic activity. There is a factory representing manufacturing, 
which is a secondary economic activity. And then there is the hotel, which represents tourism, which is a tertiary economic activity. The hotel, as you can see, is located at 21415. Now, let us imagine that there is a hurricane which occurs in the area. How would these economic activities that we just mentioned, how would these be negatively impacted? Well, the agricultural activity, which is occurring along the slopes of the volcano, might uh, be negatively impacted by landslides. Notice that the factory is close to the coast and therefore it may be impacted by storm surge which could cause flooding. The hotel as well uh, is located close to the sea and so it could also be impacted by the storm surge. Another way in which it could experience flooding is as a result of the volume of water in the river increasing to the point where it overflows its bank. Right, and because that area is flat, it could easily be flooded. All right, uh, let's see what else we can get from this map that we're looking at. If we look along the coast, we are noticing an indented coastline, and so in the areas of indentation. Uh, we could say that those are bays and in the areas where the land is projecting towards the sea, we could call those areas headlands. All right. So this is where I will stop. I hope that this benefited you. I hope that it reminded you of a few things that you probably need to delve into a little deeper. And as usual, I wish you all the best in your upcoming exams.